Hey guys, thanks a lot for checking out my video. If you guys wanna hang around for a few minutes, I'm gonna go over some things I emphasize you guys do and or I'd actually do differently if I were to redo this build. That's not to say I'm not happy with how this guitar turned out. It turned out fantastic. It looks great, it sounds great. One of a kind paint pattern and it's really well protected. I even used it in some of the songs in the video, but that's not to say there's things I wouldn't do differently. It's a new project for me and if you guys are gonna do something similar, I want yours to turn out that much better and I want us to be safe along the way. Before we get into all that, I wanna say I'm really sorry it took me so long to post this video. I had a couple personal things come up over the last couple years that kind of put this project and others on the back burner as well. I'm still the same guy with shorter hair, a longer beard. I wanna keep making these videos for you guys. So hopefully I post those sooner rather than later. All right, let's get into it. First thing I wanna cover is safety. There's nothing wrong with working with an earshot of a partner. We're working with chemicals, power tools, things that are potentially dangerous. Do I think anything bad's gonna happen during this process? Probably not, but is it a good idea to have somebody around in case it does? Absolutely, so keep that in mind. The second safety thing I wanna cover deals with air quality. A lot of stuff we're working with, you don't wanna be breathing in. So good intake and exhaust fans will alleviate that. Mine were located off screen and I also wore a respirator, so keep that in mind. In my previous ES335 video, I had some comments about me painting indoors. I did do that with this one as well. Ideally, that's not the case, but the reason being is my job did not allow me any daylight to work with. So I lay down a tarp to catch the wet overspray and anything atomized actually gets sucked out with exhaust or dries in the air and settles and it's nothing a dusting or vacuuming won't take care of. So yes, ideally you paint outdoors, but if you do it indoors, wear a respirator and just be aware of those consequences. The third and final safety thing I wanna cover deals with water and electronics. During the wet sand, I used a random orbital sander and a small, small amount of water. I misaligned the vacuum holes to make sure nothing got sucked up into the device, but it's still electronics and water. So be very, very careful. And if you feel more comfortable, please sand by hand. All right, let's get down to the build. First thing I wanna cover is paint stripper. I had some old stuff laying around. It kind of came out thick and chunky. I didn't shake it up as well as I should have. So get yourself some new paint stripper and a smaller putty knife. It'll make the paint removal much easier. Once we're down to the wood, go ahead and use some wood filler compound if there are divots and cracks. I didn't use it because the enamel paint's really thick textured and we're using several layers of lacquer anyways to smooth it out. So it's not 100% necessary, but if we're gonna do it right, might as well do it right with wood filler compound, spackle it in there, sand it down, get ready for that primer. And while we're on sanding, use a random orbital sander if you have one. I forgot I had one in storage, so I sanded by hand during one of the steps. It just makes things easier. Onto the guitar dip itself, I suggest you guys use a larger tub than I did. The reason why I used a clear one like that is because I want to get light underneath there so we see what's going on. But get a large one so you don't risk hitting the bottom and it gives you more surface area for the paint. I'd test out enamel paints on different objects and see what you like. The thicker, more viscous stuff, you're going to get those defined lines. The thinner stuff, it's going to be more of that marbly look. You can always add paint thinner to the thick stuff. It'll give you that marbly look as well. Obviously, wood floats. So you're going to want to make sure you press the guitar all the way down because if it bobs, it's going to mess up the paint. I'm stoked with how this guitar finish turned out. That's thanks to Stuart McDonald Guitar Lacquer. It turned out much better than my ES335 build. I actually plan on doing a video where I'm gonna refinish that guitar using this Stuart Mac stuff. So again, Stuart McDonald Guitar Lacquer. If you have a uh, countersink set, I'd go ahead and use that on the hardware holes. Fill it in with a little bit of lacquer and sand it down. It'll actually make it so the screws don't strip the paint in those areas. The last thing I wanna mention is the springs. I used five instead of the three shown in the video. The reason being these are high tension strings and we wanna counteract that a little bit. Well guys, that does it for me. Thank you so much for watching the video. It really means a lot. If you enjoyed it even a little bit, please, you know what to do. I hate saying it, but the truth is, is YouTube's changed quite a bit and it's really punished to smaller channels. So please show smaller channel support, even if it's not mine. Anyways, guys, thanks again. And I'll see you in the next one.